Bonjour! My name is David Sivalny. I'm an animator for Disney Animation. I've worked on films like Zootopia, Moana, and Frozen 2. And now I invite you to relax, let us pull up a chair, as we proudly present How to Draw Lumiere. I still remember the first time I ever saw Disney's Beauty and the Beast in, in the theater. I just rem remember the color, the music, and the amazing artwork, and especially the animation. I remember seeing that movie thinking, whatever I do in my life, I have to work for Disney animation. And I remember going home and just drawing these characters over and over and over again. And one of the characters that I drew a lot was Lumiere. I just remember seeing him in the movie, thinking how much fun it looked like the animators had creating him. And so now I want you to be our guest and come with me as we learn how to draw Lumiere. Okay, so let's start drawing Lumiere. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually draw a line of action, which is something that we like to do to kind of create a flow through the pose. Um, I'm drawing this line here because I'm going to draw Lumiere kind of leaning backwards a bit in this pose. And so this just kind of helps remind me what the general flow of the drawing will be. And so let's just start drawing now. I'm going to start his head, the top of his head, at the, right here at the top of this line. I'm going to do a nice kind of curved line there and then bring this line down. This is going to be the candle because his head is obviously made out of a candle. And I'm going to curve it here where his jaw and chin will be and come back up. So right now he kind of just looks like a tulip. He doesn't really look like anything. Um, one thing I do want to say is see how I'm sort of using the soft blue pencil? What we want to do is really stay rough and just block in the main shapes that create the character. Um, afterwards we can go back and clean it up and really work in the details, but the first thing we really want to do is just block out the shapes that create the character so we can kind of tell that the proportions are right and we're going in the right direction without spending too much time on tiny, tiny little details. So again, right now I'm just blocking in his head, which is this right here. And then underneath that we draw this little kind of pinched square, I guess you could call, or like a a little collar area right here, which is joined to his chest. And his chest is actually just this little kind of brass ball right here. Um, so you just draw kind of like a circle and join it here. And this is going to be the spot where his arms come out of. So on a normal candelabra, um, you know, there's that point where all the arms of the candles come out. So this is where his other arm is going to come out and it's going to shoot out here. So that's kind of what this is. And then from here, again, still following this line of action, we're going to kind of draw a long teardrop shape. I remember as a kid when I used to draw this guy all the time, I'd always draw this part so long. I, I did it way bigger than it's supposed to be, so I'm trying to remember that this time. Um, I always tended to draw this giant thing because I pictured his body being very long, but it's actually pretty small. It's a little kind of stubby, cute kind of teardrop shape. Okay, so there's there's his body, and then it connects down here to his to, to the base of the candle, which he uses as his legs. Now, because this is a character and not a, a rigid candle, uh, we want to give this some character too. So we're going to kind of have his legs like flare out here, and then on the other side. Normally, if this was a symmetrical object, we'd just draw the exact same thing on the other side. But he's very bendable and cartoony, and so we're going to actually kind of do the other side a bit like this. So it kind of feels like he's leaning, and then he kind of has this flow through him. And so, and we just join that at the bottom, and that's going to be the bottom of his feet. Now we can actually start drawing... Um, drawing his arms. And so what I like to do with him, um, and actually lots of characters as well, is sometimes the hands, if you draw them, uh, if you start drawing the arms first and stuff, you, you start to get a little cluttered and you may lose a silhouette. Because he's going to have a kind of long nose, um, I don't want his, ha his hand to overlap his face too much. So I actually like to draw his hands first and then draw the arms to connect them. So he's got candles for hands. 
And so I'm going to just draw this oval shape, which is the top of the candle. And we can even see that it's the top of the candle because we can add a little wick where the flame is going to go. And then just like his head was here, we're going to do a stubbier, smaller version of that. It's kind of like this cup shape again. And then, so now you can see that's sort of the candle. Now that's going, now that candle sits inside of this little candelabra cup here. So I'm just going to draw a line right there to remember that this actually sits inside a cup. Um, we can actually go back in and finish the details a bit later, but again, right now we're just blocking in the shapes. So now, one thing to remember about Lumiere as well is he's very round, even though he's he comes from kind of being a stiff object. He's got a lot of round shapes in him and he doesn't actually have any really sharp edges. So normally, you know, if you think of an elbow, you think it's kind of pointy like that, but he really actually kind of, you really want to round out his elbows. Almost like these, he kind of has like noodles for elbows if you want to call them that. So they kind of, these thin kind of tubes go up to connect where his arm is going to be. And then on the other side, we're going to draw his hands on his hips. So because his hand is on his hips and kind of facing away from his body, we're going to draw kind of the upside down version of this bowl shape or this cup shape. So for his other hand, I'm going to just draw the exact same shape that I did. But on this side, we're not going to do the oval because this is actually going to be facing away from us. See how this oval kind of indicates that it's leaning towards us a little bit? This one is going to be facing away. So we're going to echo this line here with the cup that holds the candle. And see now it's sort of facing away. And then draw the wick again. Okay? And then, again, because this side of his body is facing us, we're actually going to draw his other arm. We're going to actually see how it connects to his chest. And we're going to, again, do that fun noodle shape that comes down in here and connects to his wrist. So now that we've got all the main shapes blocked in, we can start adding details. And so I'm going to use a black pencil just so you can see a bit better and this is also how we kind of what we call tie down our drawing as we go. Um, so some of the the terms you'll kind of hear in this in this portion is I'm going to refer to C curves and S curves and that's exactly pretty much they, they are what they sound like. A C curve is just a line that looks like a gentle kind of C shape just one curve and then an S curve is exactly what that sounds like. It kind of starts here and then moves into an S shape. Um, again, Lumiere is made up of a lot of round shapes and a lot of round lines. He's not very sharp in too many areas. Um, so as I go forward, I'm going to refer to these kinds of lines. And hopefully that'll help you kind of understand what I'm aiming for while I'm drawing him. So uh, let's start here with his eyebrow. It's going to sort of be a very gentle S shape or S curve here. You can kind of see it's got a gentle S right there. And to give this a bit more substance, um, we're going to leave the tips of the eyebrows very pointy and then get wider in the middle and then come back to a point. And that just gives it a little bit of thickness kind of see that and you can see this flow going up through here. We're going to continue that with a C curve on this side that kind of joins this outside line of his head. So now you got a nice C curve here that kind of you can see flows into this shape. And that's his other eyebrow. Now he's, uh, Lumiere's got pretty long eyes. Um, so we're going to start by by drawing this one kind of coming out from behind his eyebrow. We're going to bring it down into a slight, very, very slight S, S curve. See how at the end it kind of tapers out here and that's just kind of where his eyelids flare forward. And then before I get to the, the actual eye line, I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to do a reversed 
C curve, see, that's just a C curve here. And that's gonna be where his lid ends. And then to complete the eye on this side, I'm gonna do a gentle C curve, tucking it back up under that eyebrow. Now, to finish his eye off, we're gonna actually rest his eye right on this eye line. So from the tip of this eyelid, we're gonna just do a very short C curve that connects to the back of the eyelid here and finish it off with his pupil, kind of see a, a little dot looking directly at us. So there's, there's his first eye. Now before we draw his next eye, we'll, we're actually going to draw his nose first because the other eye is going to be covered by part of his nose. So we're going to follow this, this eyebrow, which we made with a C-curve. We're going to continue that line down, kind of like a ski jump here. Before we get to the eye line, we're going to kind of make this look like a ski jump. It's going to shoot out here. And then before it gets too far, we're going to round this off and bring it back. and hook it to make the nostril, right there. So you can see why I call that a uh, ski jump. It kind of goes along this line, right along the, the center line of his face, which is where people's nose bridges usually are. He's gonna shoot out. Normally a ski jumper would keep going. We're gonna come back and hook to make that nostril. Now, because we see where the nose is, we can continue with the eye. So just like this one, how it came from behind the eyebrow, we're going to come from behind the nose. And this is just going to be, again, that same gentle S-curve. See, just like that. And then again, that reverse C-curve coming back here, which is going to kind of hold his other eye. And then finish off the eye resting on that eye line. And now we won't... See how we can see eye white, like the white of his eye on either side? We won't be able to see that because his nose is actually hiding that. So we just have to just kind of give a little bit of that eye or that pupil nestling right in that space there. So now you can start to see this is starting to look like Lumiere. Uh, we can actually finish this part off by just following along that candle line. But it's going to taper in just a little bit right to where the eye is and then bump out for where his cheeks go. There you go. And starting to look like him. Now what we can do um, is actually start on his other cheek. We did this cheek over here. With this cheek we're going to start right alongside the eye and just kind of do the opposite curve that we have here for his nostril. So I'm going to bring this cheek in. It's going to be very similar. It's going to look like a mirror image of that nose or of this nostril, sorry. I'm going to bring it back and stop there and then bring it this is like one of the only sharp parts of his whole, his whole uh, body. And what this little corner is here, that's going to be the corner of his mouth. Now, one other reason I really like to draw rough, and again, usually I would use this blue pencil all the way through, um, to is, is that you can make as many mistakes as you want and then erase them, or if you're pressing really lightly, you can just draw, keep drawing right over and really exploring till you get what you're looking for. So because of that, I can really use my m imagination and actually see what is going on behind this nose. And his mouth, because his mouth actually wraps around here, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna come down, like his smile would actually probably be somewhere around here, and then come down, and then, it's kind of almost like a rounded off square here, and then coming in, and go right in to that corner of his mouth. So now I'll just clean that up with, or tie that down, sorry, with the black pencil, and that's all it is for his his mouth. Now this is a fun part. This is where I really liked how the designers for him really worked um, worked his design out of what he's made of. And he's a candelabra, so I love that he's got all these 
candles that fit into these little brass bowls or brass cups that hold the, the candles in place. And that's actually exactly what his lip is. The bottom of his mouth is actually one of, the, one of these cups that hold a candle. So we can actually draw that here, and I'll show you how I would do that, is first follow this line, follow the line of his mouth, right along here, but instead of going up into the corner, we're going to continue on. And right when we get to the edge, we're going to round that off. So it doesn't really look like anything right now. I'm going to show you in, one, in just one more line, you'll see exactly what's going on. So just above this kind of corner of where his mouth turns, we're going to start a little higher, closer to his nose. And then this is going to be his bottom lip. And his bottom lip will be the rim of this, of uh, this kind of cup that's holding the candle in. So keep going over there and then stop right as you get to this jaw shape and look. Now it's like this nice little rim that wraps around. And what we can do is his jaw is actually a little bigger than I drew it so I'm gonna go over here and just finish off this line and follow that line in to tie it up. And there is his bottom lip connecting into the back of there. Now we can continue. Um, let's actually f finish off his head. And so right above this eyebrow here, we can actually draw another C curve that kind of echoes the eyebrow shape. And what this is, it's kind of the skin or the muscle underneath that when the eyebrow lifts that high, it kind of pushes up the skin. I'm gonna do one more half C curve here and see it just sort of looks like it's pushing up the skin a little bit. And we can do the other thing here. See, I'm drawing very, very lightly here. And I can kind of or echo this line with this. And you sort of, what this makes it feel like, it really makes it feel like this is a piece of uh, muscle or his skull underneath that kind of just kind of gives it a bit more structure. And now, what we can do, we'll continue. Actually, you know what? Let's start up here. This is one of my favorite things about Lumiere is he's got this kind of wax dripping that the the people who created him, and I love this, they, they kind of made, they use this wax dripping almost like as a, as a bit of hair that's hanging down in front of his forehead. So let's draw this right here. Again, we're gonna kind of do this S curve here, coming right off the top of his head, and come down right down here, and not make it too pointy or too round, and then kind of scoop it back up and join the point that you started from. Now this was one thing I learned very early on as I drew this guy more and more and more, is um, his wax drip there, um, they never wanted it to look, to look too round or too pointy, they wanted it right in the middle, which is why we kind of did it like this. It sort of doesn't get too pointy at the tip and comes right back there. And then so now we can finish this off by carrying over this line here. And then following this line here, you can complete the head and just go up right from the bottom of his head until his head is completed. Now we can move down the body. And you know what we can actually do? We can actually start to add these little um, rims to each of these cups on the rest of his body. So pretty much anywhere a candle connects, we're going to have one of these. So this bowl here has this, again, a little rim. So it's kind of like you're just drawing a little cup that the candle sits in. And I'll just tie down the rest of this. Now pretty much, again, anywhere the candles um, sit in these cups, you're going to have these little rims, so we can go do that down here as well, in this cup. So again, same thing, you're just kind of making this little kind of long tube shape that sort of acts as the rim of the cup. And then there is one other thing he does, is pretty much any time there's uh, two brass pieces that connect, they have these little 
rims as well. And so if you were to look at them from the top, they would just look like little rings, like little donuts. And so they would sit right there. And then therefore, at the bottom of this wrist as well, there'd be a ring wrapping around here, just as sort of like a brass connection. And then, let's see, oh, the other spot they would have that he would have this is right where this arm um, connects to the body. He'll have another little donut ring kind of right there. So you can just, you can see how that arm now fits right inside that body. That's kind of like, it kind of acts as his shoulder. And then let's just, while we're here, complete this little brass ball. And he'll also have another one of these little rings on the other side. So let's also just connect that and complete that arm. And then we can do that with his neck or collar, whatever you want to call that. And let's just complete this candle. Now, the other place he will have one of these rings is the is on his base where his legs are. Have one of these little brass rings here. And then this kind of comes down and he actually has another one of these rims. And again, I think this is just a way they kind of made him look like a very elaborate piece of decor. A little nice little fancy object in the castle. So another rim there. And then this continues. Down the, this is the rest of his kind of le legs or base. So we can just finish that off. We'll just trace and tie down that line. And then he has one more rim that sort of is the base. And it, that's what actually sits on the ground when he's walking around or hopping around in his case. Um, the other thing, oh. The other thing that we did that we should have drawn first is he, the other really kind of fun flourish that he has is he's got these kind of petal leaf kind of ornamentation on the bottom of these rings. And it's just sort of a, a wider C curve here and then it starts here and connects in the middle to a point and it makes this kind of petal. We do, he has three of these around his wrist. And it's just, and you'll actually start to see these repeat elsewhere. But when we get to his collar or his neck here, he actually has these same leaf or um, petal patterns, but starting from his, his, the base of his neck, they go up instead. So this is almost kind of like the, the frills of his of his uh, fancy outfit. And we kind of keep going up there and that's starting to fill in the details. We're going to do the same thing as we did on this wrist over here. So again, he's got his petals here and they kind of flare out like that. And then curve his elbow around, curve his elbow around here. There you go. And then we're going to quickly finish off his body. Again, when you first drew this, hopefully you didn't draw it too long. And again, we're starting to see Lumiere here. One more final flourish of these designs are he has the exact same pattern as these petals down here. So in the middle, using this, right in the middle, you kind of, again, do a C curve, a long C curve right from the base of this line to this line. A wider top coming right down to a point and then a line right down the middle. Now this one, because this is going to wrap all the way around him, we're going to picture like a, these, this pattern is going all the way around him. We're going to start right next to this one, but we're going to lean this one slightly over this way more to kind of feel like it's wrapping around. So again, it's a wider base and then comes to a point and then a leaf or then create the petal and then on the other side what we can do is because these are actually uh, we want these to look three-dimensional as it comes to the outside of him 
we'll have to imagine there's a very thin leaf on the outside as well. So we're going to do a very gentle C curve to make it feel like it's actually popping out on that side. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So again, wider base, come to a point, line, and then wider base. But because this one's further over, we're not going to have so much of it stick out. And there you go, it's wrapped around. And now, obviously, Lumiere would not be Lumiere if he didn't have flames coming out of his hand. Um, the cool thing about Lumiere, and I always love this thing about the character of him, is how he can turn them on and turn them off as he needs. He kind of, um, he can turn them off when he doesn't want to hurt somebody, or he uses them in just many different ways. And it was always fun to see what the animators chose to do with those. Um, so a flame is pretty easy. It's just a teardrop shape that kind of points straight up because fire burns upwards. Um, if you were drawing crazy action poses with him, that's when the, fl the flames may not be pointed straight up because if he's moving his hand, the, the, uh, the uh, flame would be following the, the path that the hand is taking, so it might be facing a different direction. But he's staying pretty still here, so we're just gonna kind of make this flame like this. He's got another wick sticking out of his head back here. We're gonna draw another flame, again going straight up towards the top of the page. And then the little hot spot here. And then this one's a little trickier because his hand is pointing downward, but it helps that the wick is sticking further out. So we can actually kind of make this a rounded tear shape and point it to the sky as well and wrap it around there. But this time the hot point's gonna be here. And there you have it. There is Lumiere. And just like most artists, once you're done your drawing of Lumiere and you put in all the details that you want and um, maybe you've even colored it, you can find your special spot to sign your name. I forgot my name for a second. I'm going to sign it right there. And there you have it. There's Lumiere. Well, I hope you had a good time learning how to draw Lumiere. I always love a good excuse to draw my favorite Disney characters, so thanks for joining me. Remember, as you go forward, stay loose, stay rough, enjoy yourself, and practice makes improvements, so just keep at it. And again, the main thing is have fun with it. Enjoy yourselves. I'm David Sidalny, and thank you for being my guest.